Have you ever wondered if you're charging the right rent for your property? Is there room for improvement? Welcome back, Loopers. I'm your host, Andrew Chung. In this video, we'll dive deep into the world of loss to lease and how understanding it can maximize your rental income. Loss to lease is a vital metric revealing missed opportunities for property improvements or rent increases. It provides insights into increasing property value and net operating income. Loss to lease is an important factor to consider when making informed decisions about property management. Loss to lease is the difference between the actual rent and potential market rent. A high loss indicates a property is not being managed efficiently or that there's room for rent increases or property improvements. However, sometimes landlords give a month free of rent to attract a new tenant. While this sometimes influences loss to lease, it can be a great way to secure long-term leases and good tenants. Whether it's residential or commercial real estate, understanding loss to lease helps in identifying areas for improvement and in evaluating property performance. To calculate loss to lease, subtract the net effect of rent from the unit's gross potential rent. For instance, if the market rent is $1,500 but you charge only $1,300, your loss is $200. Now, let's talk about risks and challenges. Increasing rent isn't always straightforward. Consider factors like potential property improvements, market demand, risks of non-renewals, and tenant turnover costs. Raising rents can lead to higher tenant turnover. It's vital to balance rental income with tenant satisfaction, keeping in mind local regulations and market trends. Balancing property improvements with rent increases is essential to minimize loss to lease while maintaining tenant satisfaction. These property improvements include renovations or remodeling, but it's important to weigh the costs of these improvements against the potential return and market demand to ensure they're a worthwhile investment. There are several ways to minimize loss to lease. They include upgrading vacant units, improve unit interiors or add amenities to command higher rents, maximizing revenue, offer optional services, rent out communal spaces, and manage overhead costs. And property management software, using tools like Doorloop to stay informed and make data-driven decisions. Doorloop automates your property management, track monthly rent, screen tenants, generate income statements, and much more. Its accounting features make tracking loss to lease a breeze. Schedule your free demo today and discover everything that Doorloop has to offer. Click on the link in the description below. And here are some frequently asked questions. Number one, is loss to lease the same as concessions? The answer is no. Concessions are temporary incentives, while loss to lease is about rent differences. Number two, what is gain to lease? This is when the actual rent exceeds the potential market rent. Number three, does loss to lease include vacancy? The answer is no. It's all about occupied units. Number four, how does loss to lease differ in monthly and fixed term lease agreements? The answer, calculations remain the same, but market rent may fluctuate based on conditions and the lease term. Well, that's it for this video. Make sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up so we can get this information to more real estate professionals. If you want to join a community with other real estate professionals, join our exclusive Facebook community with the link in the description. And to learn more about property management tips, click this playlist here. We'll see you there.